Hi everyone, I'm Li Shen and we'll be talking about the three concepts that David William argues and how he links race to health outcomes. Thereafter, we'll be using Singapore as a case study on how the patterns of social inequality persist over time. Weathering is one of the mechanisms that can possibly explain how race is linked to health outcomes. It's the early onset of disease in one's physical body, usually due to multiple social disadvantages that one experiences. We see these disadvantages within the Black community due to America's long-standing history of white supremacy and prejudice towards the Black community. Hence, chronic stress is heightened in Blacks than whites. That leads to wear and tear on the body. And this results in diseases like heart failure and CVD, which are prevalent in Blacks. David Williams also explained how this social inequality persists over time and through a longitudinal data set in race-conscious societies like Australia and Canada, non-dominant racial groups have worse health outcomes than dominant groups. In indigenous communities, they have lower life expectancy compared to the majority. Diabetes, homicide and suicide are the top three leading causes of death. It is a consistent pattern of risk of indigenous people across society. And lastly, institutional racism and personal experience of discrimination are added pathogenic factors which result in worsened health outcomes. This discrimination negatively impacts one social determinant of health. Internalized racism is defined by the minority's acceptance of social negative characteristics. They succumb to this self-fulfilling prophecy which in turn results in negative health outcomes. This is due to the increased exposure to traditional stresses like unemployment. So these mechanisms highlight the significance of how race plays a huge part to different health outcomes. And now I'll hand over to Parmes who cover the case studies in Singapore. All right, thank you, Lishuan. So David Williams' concept includes patterns of social inequities in race. And as we mentioned, this is something that persists over time. So keeping in mind that there are usually differences among the dominant and non-dominant groups across multiple countries, it is no surprise that it exists in a multicultural society such as ours. However, we should also keep in mind that these differences are not as adverse as compared to other countries. So there's a difference in the magnitude of life expectancies and rate of increases in life expectancies were actually observed amongst the different ethnic groups in Singapore. Rates of chronic diseases indicated a constant pattern. However, Indians and Malays have a high mortality rate as compared to the Chinese population. However, this data indicates that our Malay population tend to suffer the most as cardiovascular diseases and cancer is actually more prevalent amongst them. As you can see here, the life expectancy rates vary across different ethnic groups as Chinese males and females have higher life expectancies as compared to the Indian and Malay population. Patterns of social inequities that is persistent over time is shown here as the results show that this inequity persisted from 1965 to 2005. However, in 1995 and 2000, the life expectancies of Chinese females were overtaken by the rates of Indian males. As for the increase in life expectancies, there are several fluctuations. In 2005, the results showed that the Chinese population has mostly had more increase in comparison to other racial groups. I will now hand over to Rawain. Thank you, Paramed. The other reading, which uses housing as a social determinant of health in Singapore and its association with readmission risk and increased utilization of hospital services, states that one's health is determined by various factors such as social, physical, economical, and individual's traits and way of life. In particular, one's living condition has a direct correlation to one's health. From the reading, a neighborhood with people from the lower SES sees higher numbers of residents falling ill and requiring medication or health hospitalization. This is likely due to poor maintenance of facilities, poor sanitation, low air quality, and overcrowding. All of these lead to a higher risk of chronic illnesses as well. The research carried out showed that those who required more health care for patients living in one or two room public rental flats. Therefore, public rental housing is a good area level measure of SES. And my roommate Alex will now explain the data gathered from their research. Thanks, Ra. So in this slide, we'll compare the disparity between races of those who stay in rental housing. So taking data from low at all, we find that minority races, especially that of Malay, live in rental housing far more than the Chinese majority race. From the data, 1,332 out of 11,549 Chinese live in rental flats, making that 11.53%. Then 266 out of 1,352 Indians, so that's 19.67%. 500 out of 1,233 Malays, making it 40.88%. And 61 out of 323 of the remaining others, which is 18.89%. So out of these, we can see that Malays make up nearly four times that of Chinese. 
So because of the disadvantages of rental housing, these minority races are more likely to require financial assistance, acquire lung-related breathing difficulty from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, rely on antidepressants and psychotic medication, have more frequent hospital admissions, which counts as three or more in a year, be readmitted within 15 to 30 days of discharge, have longer hospital stays, have more frequent hospital visits, which is four or more in a year. And lastly, they have a higher proportion of comorbidity. So these last five factors lead to a higher lay score, which takes into account the length of stay, seriousness of admission, comorbidity, and emergency department visits in the last six months. So now Li Shen will wrap up with the presentation with our conclusion. Thank you, Alex. So from the data we have gathered, we can conclude that Singapore is experiencing the same effect as what David William argues in America. Although the effect may not be as drastic as what the minorities face in America, there is still enough conclusive evidence in Singapore that minorities' health are being affected as well. So what can Singapore do? We can consider implementing the steps which are mentioned by David Williams. Instead of providing equality, we should start providing equity among those disadvantaged and we should dismantle institutional discrimination such as labeling schools as a Chinese school or Malay schools. And hence, we should break the cycle of poverty. So thank you for your time.